1137 the decree of Allah Azza wa Jalla came to pass in Iraq a warrior a commander a leader a general a just ruler is born and those who are unaware of who this man is his name is Yusuf he's known as Salahuddin his father's name is Najmuddin his uncle's name is Asaduddin also known as Shirko the renowned warriors of Nuruddin this is Salahuddin the lion of Islam the Sultan of Egypt the king who fought Britain the king who fought the Germans the king who fought the Franks the king who fought the Romans the king who fought the Greeks the king who fought the Italians just to mention a few this is Salahuddin the conqueror of Jerusalem the conqueror of Jerusalem the conqueror of Jerusalem and the liberator of Masjid al-Aqsa the last night respected brothers sisters assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh after praising the king of all kings the master of the day of judgment the one the only allah the almighty and sending salutations on the Imam of all the Prophets, seal of all Prophets, the Chosen One, the Blessed One, the Noble One, the Bearer of Glad Tidings and a Warner, the seal of all Prophets, the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. O Muslims, once upon a time there lived a king a king a liberator a conqueror a warrior who was once asked the why don't you smile he replied the how can I smile? How could food, drink, taste good when Masjid al-Aqsa is under the Crusaders and he will be remembered because he liberated it. Muslims, non-Muslims, alike respect him and speak highly about him and he will be remembered likewise Adam alayhi salam he will be remembered why father of mankind first man that was created Nuh alayhi salam he will be remembered why for 950 years he called them towards Tawheed only a handful accepted Islam and the rest disbelieve Ibrahim alayhi salam he will be remembered why because he made a bird sacrificed it in the name of allah made it into four pieces put them on four parts of a mountain he put the bird's head near his feet how he calls in the name of allah and this meat gathers forms a bird comes by the feet of ibrahim alayhi salam places its head upon its shoulders 
and flies off. Ismail السلام, he will be remembered. Why? Because he's a baby. His mother is running up and down looking for water. This child kicks the ground. Water comes out. Today, we know it as the well of Zamzam. Ishaq السلام, will be remembered. Why? A prophet of Allah. Salih السلام, will be remembered. Why? Because the people wanted to see a miracle. They wanted a she camel, a unique she camel. He looks towards the mountain. A huge boulder is there. The boulder breaks. It shatters into pieces. And a unique she camel comes out. A huge, unique she camel comes out. Lut السلام, will be remembered. Why? Because the people were committing an abomination, a sin that no being before this committed. Allah sends Jibreel with 600 wings. He lifts the city takes it up to the heavens so close that the narration state that the angels heard the barking of the dogs and the croaking of the chickens how Jibril turns this city and slams it back onto the earth Yaqub السلام, will be remembered why? Because he had a son whose name was Yusuf alayhi salam, the dream interpreter. Musa alayhi salam will be remembered. Why? A prophet of Allah. Pharaoh is behind him. He comes to a dead end where there's only sea in front of him he points with his staff by the permission of allah how mountains of water are raised pathways are made and he makes this crossing yusha ali salam will be remembered why a prophet of allah that when he was conquering Masjid Al-Aqsa, the sun was setting. He looked towards the sun. He said that you have been given orders. I also have been given orders by Allah the Almighty. The sun's course holds and he stops until Yusha Ali Salam. He conquers Masjid Al-Aqsa and then the sun sets. Yunus Alayhi Salam will be remembered. Why? Because he's in the belly of the fish, in the bottom of the ocean, thinking there's no way out. There's no escape. How would he get out from the stomach of the whale? He hears the pebbles praising Allah. He calls out to Allah. How this whale comes to the shore and spits him out. He will be remembered. Dawood Ali Salam will be remembered. Why? Because he was given the Zabur and he was given a voice. That when he used to recite 
birds, animals used to come near him and listen to the recitation. Yahya alayhi salam will be remembered. Why? Because he was given a name by Allah himself, a name that did not exist before. Isa alayhi salam will be remembered. Why? He was born from a miraculous birth with no father and he spoke in the cradle. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he will be remembered. Why? Seal of all prophets, Imam of all prophets, the mushrikeen of Mecca, they want to see a miracle. The messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he points towards the moon, indicating with his finger, he makes the moon into half, taking one side of the moon on one side of the mountain, the other side of the moon on the other side of the mountain. But today, it's sad to say, the man's want to be remembered for how much drugs they smoke. Man's want to be remembered for how many people they cripple. This is the sad reality. I ask, how are these people going to stand in front of the Lord of the universe? When on that day, you think you're above the law. You think no one is watching you. You commit sin under the sun. And you think no one is watching. The two honorable scribes write every single thing you do. And it will be presented to the Lord of the universe on that day. And these people who cripple people, let me tell you something. On the day of judgment, on the plain of resurrection, when the fire of hell will be bought, 4 billion 900 million angels controlling Jahannam. And this person will be, he'll stand in front of Allah. And Allah will question him and he will be forced to answer. And if he does not answer, his limbs will speak, his hands will speak, his feet will speak. The very sin that he committed, the very tools that he used, they will speak against him. This is a sad reality of individuals today. And this stems from pride and arrogance. Likewise, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that Allah says that majestic pride is my garment, greatness, loftiness is my robe. And whoever wants to challenge me, I won't look at this person who he is, I will throw him in the fire of hell. And this is the sad reality that man have hit the streets and they have forgotten their identity. But there were people who left a legacy. There were individuals who left a legacy that mankind will talk about. That is written in the books of history. And that the Muslims could walk with their chins high. Knowing that there is Khalid bin Walid radiallahu an from amongst them. Just one narration comes to mind. Just to refresh your memory of the caliber of this man that come the battle of Mu'ta. The Muslims are 3,000. The enemies are 200,000. The first in command is Zaid bin Haritha radiallahu an. He's on the battlefield. The enemy is 200,000. They see him. They charge towards him. They overpower him. They strike him and he drops to the ground. The second in command is Ja'far radiallahu an. He takes the flag, dashing on the battlefield. The enemy see him. They charge towards him. They overpower him. They strike him with a severe strike. And off comes his right arm. He takes the flag with the left. The enemy see him. 
They charge towards him. They overpower him. They strike him with a severe strike and off comes his left arm. He hugs the flag. The flag must not drop. He hugs the flag. The flag must not drop. The enemies seem vulnerable. They charge towards him. They overpower him. They strike him with a severe strike and he drops to the ground. And the third in command, he takes the lead, Abdullah bin Rawaha. He takes the flag, the enemies see him, they charge towards him, they overpower him, they strike him with a severe strike and he drops to the ground. There is confusion on the battlefield. Who is to lead the army off? Who is to lead the Muslims off? Khalid bin Walid. The general, the commander, the conqueror, the ruler, he takes the flag, dashing on the battlefield. The enemy see him. They charge towards him. They try to overpower him. They strike him. Allahu Akbar. But this is Khalid bin Walid. He takes the first sword. He strikes, it breaks. He takes the second sword. He strikes, it breaks. He takes the third sword. He strikes, it breaks. He takes the fourth sword. He strikes, it breaks. He takes the fifth, the sixth, the seventh. The eighth, the ninth sword, smashing the enemies, pushing the enemy back and the Muslims retreat. From that day, this man was given that title, the sword of Allah. This is a man who left a legacy from amongst men. That mankind will talk about right till the day of judgment. Likewise, Umar radiallahu an, he left a legacy that mankind will remember right till the day of judgment. Just one narration, just one scenario. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says that if there was a prophet after me, it would have been Umar radiallahu an. Oh Umar, you do not walk down a street except the shaitan sees you and he turns directions. He, he is standing there, the mushrikeen of Makkah, they are sitting around the Kaaba. And all of a sudden, what happens is they are talking about how to assassinate the Prophet of Allah. And all of a sudden, Umar hears this and he says that what are you talking about? He says, we are finding ways to assassinate Muhammad. He says, give me this duty. He heads straight for the Prophet. On the way, he meets a man. And this man says to him, where are you going? He's seen the rage and anger in Umar's face. He says, your household, your sister has accepted Islam and your brother-in-law has accepted Islam. Fix them up first. He turns direction. He heads straight towards his household, where his sister is, where his brother-in-law is. He kicks the door. The door is open. He walks in. And he strikes his brother-in-law. His sister comes in the way. All of a sudden, Allahu Akbar, Umar radiallahu an, he sees the Quran and the Quran is recited. He recites the Quran and he comes upon a following verse. Affected by this, impacted by this, he comes out of his house and he heads towards Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa The word is going. The, Ham, uh, the Hamza is standing there. And Hamza will deal with him. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that let him come. Let him be. Let him come. We will see what he does. And when he arrives, he asks permission to come in. He comes in. He sees the Prophet of Allah. And the Prophet of Allah says, Oh Umar, why have you come? Umar says, I have come to testify. There's no God worthy of worship except Allah. And you, Muhammad, are the messenger of Allah. He returns back to Makkah. The mushrikeen of Makkah, they are hyped that this man, Umar, is a man of words, a man of action. He will come back with good news. When he comes, they ask him, did you assassinate Muhammad? He says, no, but let me tell you something now and I will tell you to your face. Look how he does this in style. That if you want your mother's and your mothers to become widows and your children to become orphans. Then do you know what? Stay where you are. Otherwise, come with me and let's migrate to Muhammad and let's accept his religion. I'm telling you guys in front of your face to the leaders. 
that I have accepted Islam and I am leaving and I am migrating to Muhammad. And if you have an issue with this, stand up, rise against me, say something now. Or don't go behind my back and say that Umar radiallahu anh hid and he ran away and he accepted Islam. He picks his bow and arrow. He picks his luggage and he leaves and he migrates to Medina. This man left a legacy. Such a legacy that mankind will talk about right till the day of judgment. But today, it's sad to say the mans have forgotten their identity. Have you forgotten who you are? Have you forgotten the sacrifices our forefathers did? They fought with everything that they had. Have you forgotten your identity? But it's sad to say that you walk the streets of Birmingham walk the streets of Manchester, walk the streets of Bradford, walk the streets of London, and you will see people will know who Ariana Grande is. People will know who Dew Lipa is. People will know who Stormzy is. People will know who these rap artists are. But when it comes to grace, people of the past, people don't have a leg to stand on. And when Allah created Adam alayhi salam, He extracted all the souls from amongst the souls. There was a soul that was destined to leave a legacy. That was destined they will become a just ruler. That was destined to become a liberator. 1137, the decree of Allah, Azza wa Jalla, the mighty came to pass in Iraq, a warrior, a commander, a conqueror, a general, a just ruler is born. And those who are unaware of who this man is, his name is Yusuf, he's known as Salahuddin, his father's name is Najmuddin, his uncle's name is Asaduddin, also known as Shirko, the renowned warriors of Nuruddin, this is Salahuddin, this is Salahuddin, this is Salahuddin, Allahu Akbar, the king who fought the Franks, the king who fought the Romans, the king who fought the Italians, the king who fought the Germans, the king who fought three monarchs, the king who fought three kings in one setting, the king that was known for his battles, the king that was known for his sieges, the king that is known for his duels, the king that was known for his combat, Allahu Akbar, he participated in the battle of Acre, he participated in the battle of Bellevue Castle. He participated in the battle of Haiti. He participated in the battle of Jaffa. Just to mention a few, he was known for his generosity. He was known for his kindness. He was known for his fortitude. He was known for his uprightness. Allahu Akbar. He was known for his worship. Allahu Akbar. This is the man. He studied Quran. He studied Hadith. He studied Fiqh. Allahu Akbar. He studied lineage. This is the man. This is Salahuddin, the warrior of Islam. The soldier of Allah, Allahu Akbar, regarding whom the narrations will stay that this is the man that even the enemies will say to their people, to their soldiers, that I want you guys to reach a higher state than Salahuddin. This is the man that even the enemies will say that Allahu Akbar, that this man is a perfect example of a perfect knight. This is a man that he made three districts in Jerusalem, one for the Muslims, one for the Christians, one for the Jews. Why? So they could live in harmony. This is Salahuddin. This is Salahuddin. This is Salahuddin. Why? Because come the battle of Haiti and those who are unaware of what this battle is, it's a battle that paved the way of opening the gates of Jerusalem and bringing back the joy of the Muslims. And bring it back the glory of the Muslims. Allahu Akbar, the very place that the narrations will stay. They sallallahu alayhi wasallam says that he, he sat on Burak and he shot off to the heavens. He went to the first, he went to the second, he went to the third, he went to the fourth, he went to the fifth, the sixth, the seventh heaven. He spoke to Allah and he came back with the gift of Salah. The very place regarding whom the narrations will stay. They sallallahu alayhi wasallam is standing there. 
آدم علیہ السلام نوح ابراہیم اسماعیل اسحاق صالح لوت یعقوب موسا یوشا الیاس یونس ایوب جاود یحیا عیسا all the prophets are there 124,000 prophets more or less are standing there the muazzin gives the adhan who is to be made imam the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he receives this honor and is made the imam of all the prophets and why did this battle take place is because Reynald the satan of Shatilan he is the man there was a prince of the Antioch he is the man that bore Muslims lives to an end he is the man that launched five fleets of ships to go and attack the Muslim he is the man that all of a sudden there were the hujjaj were traveling and they were performing they were about to perform their pilgrimage and all of a sudden what happens Reynald, he launches a ferocious attack. He threw some in dungeons. And when one of the Muslims said, Oh, Reynald, there is a truce between Salahuddin. There is a truce between the Crusaders and Salahuddin. He says, Hell with the truce. Hell with Salahuddin. Go tell your Muhammad to save you today. And when the news reached Salahuddin, he has broken the truce and he's insulted the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Salahuddin Ayyubi, he assembles his army of 30,000. And he says to the leaders of the crusade that you know what, hand over Reynal. And if you do not hand over Reynal, then prepare for battle. Allahu Akbar. They disagreed and they said, we are not going to hand over Reynal. All of a sudden, Salahuddin looks at his son. He says, Adil, go find this Satan. Go find Reynal of Shatilan and bring him to me. I will give people justice. The army is dispatched all of a sudden on the other side. The enemy, the crusaders, they gathered the army, they assembled the army of 20,000 on horseback, geared up. They were on horseback, they were fully geared up. All of a sudden, they make their way in the desert, headed towards the lake of Tiberias. Why? Because they understood one thing, that instead of Salahuddin coming to us, we will go to him. And this was what the historians say, the biggest mistake of the crusaders. The army is dispatched, they are holding the true cross and they are traveling in the desert. They are traveling in the sun. When Salahuddin knew that they are coming, he understood that he said that, you know what, let these people come. They will not be able to handle the heat of the Middle East. So let them come. He assembled his army, a batch of his army by the lake of Tiberias and another batch of his army by the spring of Haitin. Because why? He understood one thing, that these people are coming, they will be hungry, they'll be thirsty, their water supply will run out. And the first thing that they will go for will be the water supply. So the, the crusaders, they assemble, after assembling the army, they headed towards the lake of Tiberias. And when they landed near the lake of Tiberias, they seen the army of Salahuddin, Allahu Akbar. They start firing arrows after arrows. And they try to break the lines of Salahuddin's forces, trying to make the crossing for the water. Why? Because they were thirsty like never before. Their water ran out. Their horses were thirsty. Their camels were thirsty. They wanted water. Allahu Akbar. Akbar, the forces of Salahuddin, the knights of Salahuddin, the soldiers of Salahuddin, they start firing arrows after arrows, arrows after arrows, arrows after arrows, pushing the whole army back. And when they understood that they will not be able to land and to make break the lines of Salahuddin's forces, they turned back and they headed towards the spring of Haitin because they were hungry, they were thirsty. It was only six miles. So they turned direction and they headed straight towards the spring of Haitin. And when they came near the spring of Haitin, all of a sudden they've seen another batch of Salahuddin's army, the forces of Salahuddin, the knights of Salahuddin, the soldiers of Salahuddin, and all of them are assembled with their crossbows, ready to launch an attack. When they come nearby, all of a sudden this army of, and the forces of Salahuddin, they start shooting arrows after arrows, arrows after arrows, pushing the whole army back. And when the whole army is pushed back, they stop there and they stop at a place called Meskana where they pitch their camps. And when they pitched their camp, they were deciding, how would we make our way through? We are hungry. We are thirsty. We need water. Our people are dying out of dehydration. And all of a sudden, when one of them says, let's wait till the next morning. So they decided to stay till the next morning. Meanwhile, Salahuddin, he assembled his army together. 
And he divided his army into three columns, one on the left, one on the right, and one in the middle under him. And all they lit a huge fire to the trees, to the bushes, to the grass and the smoke and the ashes blew their direction. They stopped beating their drums so the crusaders could not sleep. And when night fell, they were thirsty. They were getting agitated. The drums were beating. Allahu Akbar. The next morning they woke up. They woke up to black smoke. The next morning they woke up. They woke up to ashes. The next morning they woke up. They woke up to dust everywhere. So they decided that they will make their army into two divisions and they will strike and they will launch an attack. They launched an attack. One part of the army of the crusaders made their way through and headed towards Tyre while the rest of them were surrounded to so and so that the Generations will stay that even a cat would not be able to escape from the forces of Salahuddin. The soldiers of Salahuddin they start firing arrows after arrows, arrows after arrows, arrows after arrows. And when the crusaders, those who were caught, they said to them, That do you want to come into captivity? They said, No, we rather die. And the forces of Salahuddin, the knights of Salahuddin, they encircled a camp and they encircled a tent. And inside the tent was King Gi and Raynal of Shatilan. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, the forces of Salahuddin, one of them shouted out and he said, Oh, we have defeated the enemy. We have defeated the enemy. The enemy has been rooted. The enemy has been rooted. The enemy has been rooted. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, Allahu Akbar, Salahuddin speaks out from the back and he says that the enemy has not been rooted. The enemy has not been defeated. As long as the tent remains, the enemy remains. As long as the tent remains, the enemy remains. As long as the tent remains, the enemy remains. And soon after, after Allahu Akbar, the knights of Salahuddin, they attack the tent and the tent is taken down. King Gi is inside. The narrations will stay. The King Gi sees the tent, sees the man inside whose name, who is the king. The historians will write that he was holding the cross, hoping that they will get some miracle, hoping that he'll be shown a miracle, hoping that the cross will save him. They are taken to Salahuddin. They are caught and they are dragged to Salahuddin. Salahuddin looks at him and sees the thirst on King Gi's face. And he says to him, they have a bowl of water. He drinks the water and then he gives it to Reynold. And when Reynold puts it to his mouth, what happens? He, he's about to drink it. Salahuddin knocking the bowl out of his hand and he says, you evil man, this is not for you. You have broken the truth. You have insulted the prophet. He takes his head from his body. And King Gi, when he looks at the face, he fears that Salahuddin will bring his life to an end. He says to Salahuddin, what's going to happen to me? And Salahuddin says, there is not the custom of kings to kill kings. And then he was thrown in prison. Victory to Salahuddin in the battle of Haitin. Victory to Salahuddin in the battle of Haitin. Victory to Salahuddin in the battle of Haitin. This is Salahuddin. This is the night warrior. And when Salahuddin, when he took and destroyed the enemies, he took Ramla, he took Beirut, he took Lebanon by storm. And Balian understood one thing. Balian who escaped from the battle of Haitin from the second column, from the second group and they headed towards Tyre. He understood. That this man Salahuddin is going city to city, village to village, and he is destroying the enemies. The enemies are dropping one by one. My wife and my kids, they're in Jerusalem. He writes and sends a message to Salahuddin via deputy that my wife and my kids are in Jerusalem. Give me safe passage. Allahu Akbar, look what Salahuddin says. That you know what? On a condition you do not fight against me. On a condition that you do not raise arms against me. On a condition that you grab your wife and you grab your kids and you go straight to Tripoli to a place of refuge. On a condition that you will not do a funny one. You make sure you leave with your wife and kids straight away. He agrees and he takes an oath. That he will do it. Balian, he leaves. He goes straight to Jerusalem. Enters into Jerusalem. Heraclius is there. The leader of the time. And he says that, you know what? We are in need of a Christendom. We are in need of a man to lead the army of Balian. Could you have come here? He says, no, but I have took an oath with Salahuddin. 
I've took an oath with Salahuddin that I will not fight against him. I will not raise arms against him and I will leave straight away. He says, no, you rather serve the Christians than have an oath with this infidel and non-Christian. And then Balian, he says to Balian, today is the day that I absolve you of your sin. The oath is not binding upon you. And then Balian writes and sends a message to Salahuddin about the predicament that he's in. Oh, Salahuddin, this is the situation. I can't leave. Salahuddin says that I will stick with my side of the oath. 50 nights from the elite of the army are dispatched and deployed. They head towards Jerusalem. They say that we have come for Balian's wife and the kids. They take Balian's wife and the kids and they take him to a place of refuge in Tripoli. And then Salahuddin conquering city to city, village to village, he lands outside Jerusalem. Right outside the gates of Jerusalem, the army of Syria, the army of Egypt, they are assembled under one power, one mission, one job, and that is to bring back the glory of the Muslims. He sends a message. Surrender the city or prepare for battle. The Iraculous, he says, no, we are prepared for battle. Salahuddin, the knights, could you just imagine 30,000 soldiers with huge catapults, huge rock loaders, huge crossbows with Greek fire. And they landed outside the gates and they, Salahuddin ordered his soldiers, his forces to launch an attack. The arrows are shot. The rock loaders are launched. They start pelting the ramparts. For six days, continuous pelting. They were not able to mine the walls. They turn direction and they go towards a leave with the trees of olives are. And then Salahuddin launches another ferocious attack. Huge catapults, rock loaders. The walls are mined and the walls collapse. The soldiers of Salahuddin, the forces of Salahuddin, they make their way through and they start sticking their banners up. Balian understood that you know what, they're in. The uh, Salahuddin's forces has come. You know what, we will definitely be defeated. So he quickly come out with the envoy. He comes out and he says to Salahuddin, let's negotiate. Salahuddin says, you want to negotiate? My flags are already up. Your army has been pushed back. Your walls have collapsed. He says, let's negotiate. He says, I only accept unconditional surrender. Surrender the city or prepare for battle. Balian says, do you know what? You come in by force. We're going to have problems. We have 5,000 Muslims in captivity. We will not let anyone escape. We have dirhams, dinars. We will get rid of them. Our women, our children. We will make sure that you do not take any of us in captivity. All the Muslim sites, Aqsa, we will destroy it. We will make sure everything comes to an end. Salahuddin looks at him and he says, Surrender the city. I'm going to give you one more chance. You surrender the city. And you pay a little ransom. You and your army, you and your people will be free to go. And we will escort you to a place of refuge, to the place where the Christians are. He puts his head down and he walks off. He goes to Iraculus, surrender the city to Salahuddin. Salahuddin has come. He has overpowered us. 
we either surrender the city or the enemy will come and he will destroy every single one of us and when Balian made this claim and said this the whole people of Jerusalem start gathering their stuff and the evacuation begun 88 years prior to this when the first crusade came and they landed in Jerusalem historians will write the Muslims Jews and Christians they weren't spared historians will write and these are non-Muslims no child no woman no man was spared we used to walk the streets our feet were colored red why because the blood of the slain no one was spared but when salahuddin walked in a man of justice it reminds you of how the prophet of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam walked in on the conquest of mecca 10,000 companions they leave from Medina joining on and they head towards Mecca with fire lit in their hands they are praising Allah imagine the scenery the Prophet of Allah leading them off on his camel black turban he is praising Allah they come outside Mecca surrounded the whole of Mecca persecution after persecution Sumayya radiallahu anha horses were tied on her legs and were forced to run the opposite way what do you think the Prophet of Allah is going to do with them now? The mother of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Mushrikeen of Makkah are saying Let's find her grave Let's unbury her and drag her in the streets What do you think the Prophet of Allah is going to do with them now? Bilal radiallahu an He's in the scorching heat, lying on the desert. How do you think the Prophet of Allah is going to deal with them now? Khalid bin Walid, Umar, Abu Bakr is there. The Prophet of Allah says to the leaders who was leading the three division of it, the 10,000. Do you know what? He says, today is the day. That you will be shown mercy and he forgives them and many of them are freed how salahuddin walks in visualize this persecution after persecution this man walks in and he smiles why did he smile because like at the start i said that when he was asked oh salahuddin why don't you smile how can i smile how can food taste good drink taste good when masjid al-aqsa is under the crusaders straight away salahuddin he freed thousands of them his brother freed thousands of them those who were under the rulership of the Muslims who were in Jerusalem, they were freed. The old, the young who could not afford the ransom, they were freed. Sibylla, the queen of Jerusalem, she was freed. Salahuddin says, go see your husband. Go to King Gi, go see your husband. Women, children, were freed. This was the mercy and the justice of this just ruler, Salahuddin. 
And when the Europe found out and they got the message that Salahuddin has taken Jerusalem and the Christians have left the vicinity and they have migrated to Christian lands. Pope Urban III, he sends a message out to the whole of Europe. We are in need of men to lead an army to bring an end to the Muslims and to bring back Jerusalem into the hands of the Crusades. Three kings rose. King Richard, King Augustus, King Barabusa, three kings under one rule. The army is dispatched from Europe and they head towards Jerusalem by sea. They made Tyre the staging point. The Muslims who were there, they tried defending the land. All of a sudden, fire after fire, the crusaders, they overpowered the Muslims and they took them in captivity. And the battles continued for two years. They were keep on gain, battered left, right and center by the enemies. They were attacking the Muslims and then Salah, they headed towards the coast of Jerusalem where Salahuddin's forces, where the power of Salahuddin, the might of Salahuddin was there. And the battles continued until Richard understood that there is no way we will be able to defeat the enemy. I need to negotiate with Salahuddin. The king Richard, king of England, he met with the king of Egypt, Salahuddin. And he says to Salahuddin, O oh Salahuddin, let's negotiate. All I want you to do, return Jerusalem back to us. All those cities that you conquered in the battle of Hatin, after the battle of Hatin, return all of them cities back to us. Salahuddin looks at him and he laughs and he says unacceptable. He says, as the historians write, the historic proposal of King Richard was this. Oh Salahuddin, then let's do this. I will marry my sister to your brother Saifuddin. You give Jerusalem to your brother Saifuddin. I will give the coast to my sister as a dowry. He welcomed the offer and he says, let's agree. And King Richard went back to the Franks and the Pope. And they start criticizing him and threatening him. That how dare you fool you made such an arrangement. So the arrangement was taken back. He went to Salahuddin and he says, let's negotiate on something else. And when they understood that the forces of Salahuddin, the power of Salahuddin and the might of Salahuddin, that they will not be, they will not be giving the land over. He says, do you know what? You keep Jerusalem. We will keep the coast. You let the Christian, the Jews enter into the city whenever they want and we will leave Salahuddin agrees the forces the three monarchs the three kings destroyed and dishonored by Salahuddin's forces they leave King Barbusa when he tried killing the Muslim from the side he ended up drowning off his boat the rest of the kings, they had to do return. The might of Europe could not take Salahuddin out because Allah was with Salahuddin. This is the reality. And then Salahuddin, he decided 
to return back to his homeland to Egypt where he lived as a king but not like your normal kings that sits on a throne the narrations will state that the rest of his life he lived his life worshiping Allah building schools building hospitals building places of worship and fixing his administration making sure that there's no corruption and Salahuddin after making the administration and holding its power and conquering and liberating Jerusalem from the enemies Salahuddin leaves the world to Allah we belong and to Allah is our return. Lived like a king. Died as a king. This is Salahuddin. The just ruler. The conqueror. The liberator. And the reviver. I begun by saying. That Salahuddin. He didn't smile. Why? How can I smile? How can food taste good and drink taste good when Masjid Al-Aqsa is under the Crusaders? I end by saying, Wallahi would have been a scene. Seeing Salahuddin smile the first time. Why? Because he became the liberator of Masjid Al-Aqsa. I pray to Allah the Almighty that Allah elevates his status with the companions, with the Prophet. I pray to Allah the Almighty that Allah forgives our sins and raises us with the companions of the Prophets and gives us a high abode in Jannah.